uh, I won't stretch the session too much. OK. And so let me share my PPT. Uh, is my PPT visible? Yes. Sure. Mm, so yeah, I would be talking on importance of data structures, like how you should study them. Okay, like uh, what are the methodologies which you need to follow? All that I would be telling you here. Mm, so let's start with a humor to freshen you up. Okay, you had you guys had college lectures today. You would be having right, or it is a holiday for you. Come on, just unmute yourself and just speak out. Shreya, what, did you had college or uh, like what you did? You had holiday today? Yes, definitely. <laughs> but uh, yes, like we had our practical exams going on. I mean, so we'd, we'll be having those and we finished our semesters. So it's kind of an in-between time. So there is a lot of tension. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> that's what's going on. OK, OK. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if it if it wouldn't be a holiday, then some of you might prefer it has a holiday by bunking lectures today, right? Which is not bad at all. I mean, it's, good. it's a special day after all. <laughs> or this special day after all. So yeah. yeah, some interesting facts about DSA is like this is one of the story you know, uh, which I read on Quora and it sounds very relatable to me, like. It sounds very convincing to me. So data structure is a subject, you know, which we hate in the beginning. So when it is introduced to you in the first year or second year of your college, you somehow, you know, pray that I'll somehow pass this subject and then I won't see the phase again. So what you do in a way you break up with this subject. I know it's a Valentine's Day and I shouldn't be using these words, but can't help. Okay. Uh, so that is the thing. First, you hate it. You hate it to such an extent that you think that once I pass the subject, I won't be able to, uh, I won't be seeing the face of the subject again. But it is like a ex. You can hate your ex or you can love your ex, but you can't ignore. Okay. So that is the methodology. So data structure says you can hate me or you can love me, but you cannot ignore me. Why? Because it keeps, you know, coming back to you, beat whatever course you take. So you, uh, for example, in your first year, you ignored your data structures and uh, you believe that uh, you know, that kind of thing. Like you say, you believe that uh, I'm glad that I passed this subject, but now I won't be able to see the face. But then again, it comes to you in the form of operating systems practical. So your teacher, your professor might ask you to write a code using FCFS, which involves first in, first out, which involves queue data structure. So at that point of time, you are stuck. If you don't know data structures, then you won't be able to, you know, uh, what you say, code it. So it's just like you can ignore data. You can hate data structures or you can love data structures, but you can't ignore data structures. It's this proverb is very much suitable. It is very much holds true. Okay. Then obviously, chalo, like let's assume that this OS subject, all the coding, all the practicals you uh, did from taking the help from the internet. Um, anyhow, you did it. But then comes your fourth year and it's placement time. And then after facing a couple of rejections from the interview, because you didn't know data structures, what you did is you sit, uh, you sat down and you gathered all your courage to learn data structures. And then you found that, yes, this is interesting and I love it. So I would suggest you is instead of coming down to this phase and then starting the data structures, just love data structures from the beginning itself. Okay. Since it's Valentine's Day, it's a perfect uh, word to use love love okay so just you uh, just love data structures as you love all other things in your life from the beginning itself don't hate it 
okay otherwise it's going to cost you and it will make data structures will make sure that you love that subject otherwise it will not leave you okay so this is some of the interesting facts related to data structures uh now why you should learn data structures okay so learning data structures is a one time investment in your college life i have seen people whose uh dbms operating systems basics are not clear but their uh, data structures is clear so they landed up in a decent job which paid them around 6 to 7 lakh salary per annum just by knowing dsa so that is how dsa is important to you okay so first is it is a one time investment you just have to learn it you have to grasp the concepts and then you are good to go and then it will help you to land a job in top mnc uh now nowadays you know many product based companies such as amazon google microsoft over there in order to step into the interview you need to have some five to six really amazing projects using data structures right so sure. uh do we have any doubts as of now if we don't have any doubts then we'll proceed further now let's come to the steps for learning data structures all right so you start from the bottom and then you reach till the end okay let's explore each step step by step what is your first thing you need to do is understand the theory part very clearly be it stack be it queue be it graph or be it linked list understand the theory part very clearly once you are done this understanding the theory part move to the next step that is over here now implement all the theory part which you have learned during your college lectures so your professor might teach you stack queues in your theory lecture so what you need to do while you move from this step to this step after coming to this step you need to implement all the theory part so you need to code it like stack queues just code it whatever you have been taught in your theory lecture come home take your laptop and just code it and coding i mean by understanding it not copy pasting the codes from the internet okay uh once you are done till here then what i would encourage you to do is think and explore for example you have coded stack now think like where can i use stack in real life situation where can i use queue in real life situation so queue in real life situation i can implement it in railway uh, purchasing counter ticket purchasing counter ticket purchasing counter follows what approach fifo first in first out because why it follows because one person who is front of you is more ahead in the queue he will get the ticket first upon his exit only the other person who is standing behind him will get the ticket right so once you have implemented queue think of a real time situation where you can code it okay where you can make real life projects okay so one of the example i give you is railway ticket management system over there you can use queue so write a program for railway ticket management system using data structure and to uh, queue data structure to be specific so you need to think and explore of real life scenario once you uh, once you are done till this step once you are able to define your own problem statement you are able to solve then i would suggest you is start solving competitive programming questions okay so competitive programming questions like i would be discussing a few there are various sites in which you can practice competitive programming questions okay and once you are done till that then finally you try to optimize your code optimize your code in terms of time and space complexity so then you are congratulations you have cleared all these steps now you are able to you would be able to crack an interview okay 
do we have any doubts till here if no doubts then we'll proceed now comes the steps to follow while coding you know so over here also you start from the bottom and then you reach the top so steps to follow is read a problem very thoroughly understand its head and tail okay then before starting to code you write the solution you write the solution in your notebook and try to write the most optimized solution and once you are done with that then you begin your actual coding please never jump from this step to this step it won't help okay go step by step first you read the problem then you pen down your solution in a notebook and then you start uh, with the actual coding coding as i mean code in a laptop or your computer okay now how to you know learn data structures like how do you start solving like what are these steps so i have categorized it into linear data structures and non linear data structures the first and the foremost more important thing you should learn is arrays okay action involves adding inserting deleting elements from front and in between searching and sorting is one of the most important program finding the largest and smallest element and once you know just make arrays your uh, daily tonic like your daily uh, like you might be having food daily right so make sure you make arrays as one of your ingredient in your food okay and practice all this programs very thoroughly don't jump from year to year so once you are thorough with arrays part start with queues and uh, then you start with circular queue then you start with stack then you start with double stack then you start with linked list and then you start with heaps all these things has to be implemented using arrays only okay i hope you understand the difference between a linear data structure and a non linear data structure if no then just ask in the chat box i would answer then once you are thorough with this linear data structure just come to non linear data structures which is trees search tree which is binary search tree avl tree red black tree graphs all the hashing techniques and the sets then you are good to go like then you would be able to solve any problem now let's uh, look at the important sites to practice like these are all the sites where you can practice data structures so hacker rank is the site geeks for geeks code chef code forces and lead code these are five most popular sites for practicing data structures right let's discuss one problem uh, so this is uh, the problem which consists of a competitive programming so i hope you remember the flow uh, how you have to reach over here so you have to start with competitive programming only when you are comfortable with defining your own problem statement so after this part only you have to reach uh, to competitive programming okay once you are comfortable with defining your own problem statements and you are able to write code for it then only come to this part uh, the all the websites which i had mentioned here okay so how a question would be so it would be in the form of you have three stacks so this is the problem statement okay and this is the example which uh, like in max we have one solved examples and then we are given one exercise to solve right so that is the thing you are given a question first and then they'll give you an example of the question and then functional description like what all functions you have to write what all parameters you have to define okay then the input format like uh, it is a space separated input right so how the input should be so they will mention it should be a space separated input or any other input if they want to find and then the constraints your input constraints should be abiding to this rules okay and additionally 
see for your better understanding they have explained you the solution also so this is how a competitive programming question looks like you have the problem statement you have the example you have the functional description like what all functions there is a need for you to define and there is a input format so n1 n2 n3 that means your program will have three inputs right and then the constraints and then all these things then the actual example so this is an example which is taken from hacker app okay so you can choose from any of the mentioned websites uh to mention geeks for geeks has the highest number of questions to solve for practice okay and over here you have an option to choose your coding language and all this are the predefined code which they have given you you have to add your own logic over here so for n1 n2 and n3 what is this these are all the user defined inputs which they have already given you so you don't have to write that again okay so you just have to add your only your logic over here and after that if you are not sure that your uh, solution is appropriate just click on run code button when you click on run code button they'll show you how many test cases passed how many test cases failed and once you are sure that all my test cases are passed then you click on submit i hope i'm clear mm, do we have any doubts till now okay if no doubts then i'll proceed further now like what to expect in a technical assessment round okay so before that it is very important to clear your aptitude round so i hope uh, like you guys are practicing your aptitude as well okay so uh, in technical assessment round first things first keep basics of operating systems database management system and any one programming language very clear be it python be it java be it c++ be it c at least one programming language you should be you should be knowing the head and tail and also basis basics of operating systems i mean like all the scheduling algorithms what are threads what are deadlocks in dbms what are joins how it is used all that you should be aware of then comes the part if it is an online interview then you would be asked to share your screen and code in front of the interview panel okay like you have uh, like as i am sharing my screen you would be sharing your screen and you would be coding it live the third very important part is keep your github profile updated they ask you like whatever projects you are doing just pull it in github they because they ask for your github account link also okay and uh, like in an interview before you start coding explain your approach like for example uh, one question is given to you in that question like how you what data structure you are going to use explain that uh, to your interview panel and once you get a green signal from them then you start coding okay just don't code hurry in a hurry manner okay if you get stuck somewhere okay just try to explain your logic to the interviewer and they will help you so if it is a minor mistake then they will obviously they'll help you okay now comes uh, once you have cleared the technical assessment round then comes the hr interview now what to do expect in a hr interview is do good research about the organization like the establishment date when it is established or who is the founder who is the co-founder why is why you want to work in that organization for example if i want to work in amazon then what attracts me to work in an amazon okay so avoid being biased towards one question so if they ask you what are your strengths and weaknesses balance it out it should not be in such a way that uh, you are just focusing on your strengths and there are no weaknesses okay so a proper balance is necessary be as much confident as you can okay uh, like don't fumble because they are obviously going to judge you and then maintain a proper eye contact with the interviewer 
if it is an offline mode if it is an online mode also no need to worry so that is what all i have all the best and uh, you can contact me in this email id or you can connect with me on linkedin as well uh, now the room is open for doubts you all can put up your doubts in the comments also I hope you understood the session, guys. I mean, I didn't stretch it so long. I kept it to the point. Right? Do you guys have any doubts? So to begin for a competitive uh, programming, uh, we can start off at even in our first year and second years, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you start in your first year and second year, I think you would get a lot of time to practice. Yes. So what mystics people do in the final year after getting rejected from a couple of interviews, they start practicing DSA. So avoid okay. doing that mistake. Right. Um, like anything else you guys want to ask? Prakash said no. Okay, cool. If you have any other doubts, you can maybe. Uh, um, Shreya just share my LinkedIn link with them. Okay, so if yes. they want to connect, then uh, you are almost welcome. Anytime. Sure. Sure. So, Shreya, we can end the meeting right now. Yes. If you want anything to discuss. If we, yes, if we don't have any more doubts, then we can end the session. Thank you so much, Karthik. Yeah, sure. It was a really uh, like a right uh, session. We needed for a long time. And your real life references made it easier to understand. And even the step-by-step -step guide to how to go uh, ahead and solve a question the, to have the right approach. So thanks a so lot. For that. the PPT, I can send it to you. Okay, so yes. you can forward. Uh, that would be great. Okay. Okay, guys, bye. All the best and enjoy your day. Valentine's Day. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. You all can leave now.